There is a lot of news going on, but it is rare when you have a piece of cultural news that is so big, it sort of eats everything else. And that is what is happening with the release of Prince Harry's new book, Spare. Now, as I've said before, I'm not big into the royals. I don't really follow the royals all that much. I haven't followed their various scandals because, frankly, we fought an entire revolution, so we don't have to care about the royals. But there is something deeper going on with the battle over whether Prince Harry is a good guy or a bad guy, whether the royal family are villains or heroes and all the rest. And something obviously is happening here because Prince Harry's book sold 1.4 million copies in the U.S., U.K., and Canada on its very first day, which means this is going to be one of the biggest bestsellers of all time. According to the Wall Street Journal, this is a performance the publisher Penguin Random House said was the largest first day, first day sales total for any nonfiction book it has ever published. The first day sales totals for Spare included pre-orders as well as the sales of print books, digital books, and audiobooks. Penguin Random House, a unit of Bertelsmann SE, said Wednesday, the publisher said it printed 2 million hardcover copies of Spare for the United States. It has already gone back to press. So this book was officially released Tuesday. It was mistakenly leaked a little bit last week. But the demand for Spare has been so strong that Barnes & Noble, the largest bookstore chain in the United States, said on Tuesday the memoir looks certain to set record-breaking day one sales at the bookseller is expected to be one of the biggest books of 2023. That is an understatement. It will end up being one of the biggest books of all time. The reason I say this is because some of the other big books that have been sold recently sold 725,000 copies in the, in the first day. That would be Michelle Obama's Becoming, for example, or Mary Trump's ridiculous tell-all book about Donald Trump. That thing sold a little bit less than a million. So this thing is, is selling 40 to 50% higher and sometimes 100% higher than the biggest bestsellers of our time, which says something about what this book is really about. Now, some of this is just pure Purians, right? People want to know what's going on behind the walls of an institution that is historically incredibly tight-lipped about what is happening. People are very hungry for this sort of news. This is why, of course, Princess Di was always big press in the UK, but also in the United States. But there's something else going on here. And that is the cultural battle that has broken out around Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and the royal family. And in order to understand that cultural battle, I'm going to play you two clips. One is a clip from Prince Harry's new book. And the other is a clip from Queen Elizabeth back in 1947, aged 21, when she assumed the monarchy. And what we are watching right now in real time, because I, what I really think is that Prince Harry's spare is a metaphor for the new generation of Western leadership and a new generation in the West that believes that the institutions that bore it are fundamentally evil and that the way you demonstrate that you are good is by breaking with those institutions without any other sense of morality or decency. And that everything you do is justified for your need, by your need for, quote unquote, freedom, your need for liberty, your need to be free and fly, little bird. Literally, this book ends, as we will see, with a bird flying away. I'm not kidding you. So we begin with not Prince Harry, but his grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, who recently passed away, obviously. Here she was at age 21, dedicating herself to the realm in her birthday address. I can make my solemn act of dedication with a whole empire listening. I should like to make that dedication now. It is very simple. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. But I shall not have strength to carry out this resolution alone unless you join in it with me, as I now invite you to do. I know that your support will be unfailingly given. God help me to make good my vow, and God bless all of you who are willing to share in it. Okay, so this is how leadership used to work. The way that leadership worked is you were a member of the royal family and you assumed that role, and the role was to be the leader of the British Empire, at least in name and in face. And you were supposed to live for that institution. You had been handed down a heritage of generations, a thousand-year heritage, and it was your job now to fit yourself into that role, to mold yourself to that role, to abide by that role. This is what made you an important and worthwhile human being was conformity to that role. And yes, of course, changing the role and shaping the role, but most of all, respecting the role that you had been given. That is one form of leadership. That's the leadership of the West for generations. And in most other cultures, this is the way that leadership works as well. We have a new brand of leadership in the West. And unfortunately, it is characterized by people like Prince Harry. His brand of leadership is, the system is bad, I must break with the system, and this amounts to an extraordinary self-censored narcissism. 
We'll get to more on this in just one second. First, let us talk about the state of your business. So it looks like we're about to enter a recession. Pretty much all the economists think so at this point. And you're looking at your business, you think, wow, this has been a rough few years. Well, what if you've overpaid your taxes and you could get some of that money back? This is why you need to call up my friends over at Innovation Refund. If your business has five or more employees and managed to survive COVID, you could be eligible to receive a payroll tax rebate of up to 26 grand per employee. It's not a loan. There's no payback. It is a refund on your taxes. The challenge is getting your hands on it. How do you cut through the red tape and get your business the refund money? You head on over to GetRefunds.com. Their team of tax attorneys are highly trained in this little known payroll tax refund program. They've already returned a billion dollars to businesses and they can help you as well. They do all the work, no charge up front. You simply share a percentage of the cash they get for you. Businesses of all types can qualify, including those who took PPP, nonprofits, even those who had increases in sales. Just head on over to GetRefunds.com, click on Qualify Me, answer a few quick questions. This payroll tax refund, it's only available for a limited amount of time, so don't miss out. Go to GetRefunds.com. Again, that is GetRefunds.com. Go check them out right now, GetRefunds.com. Also, you've been noticing a lot of natural disasters out there, whether it is COVID, whether it is an earthquake, whether it is a tornado or a hurricane, or whether you are just in a situation where you're kind of disconnected from your local pharmacy. Sometimes you need a medicine and it ain't available, which is why you need to call up my friends over at Jace Medical. Jace Medical helps you get a long-term supply of prescription medication. Their mission is to empower you to be better medically prepared. A great way to start preparing is with the Jace case. It's a pack of five different courses of antibiotics you can use to treat a whole host of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, and more. All you have to do is fill out a simple online form. In some cases, jump on a quick call with one of their board-certified physicians. And from there, you can ask your physician treatment-related questions on an ongoing basis. This is a great way to prepare for anything. You're going on a trip, and you don't actually have a prescription abroad, but you know that you're going to get a throat infection. Like Now would be a great time to call up Jace Medical. Uh, My wife is a doctor, and very often there will be people who call up people like my wife. I've done this to other doctors. And I've said, listen, I'm going out of town. I know I'm going to get a throat infection because this tends to happen very often when I fly. Can I get a prescription that I can fill on the other end? Well, that's essentially what the Jace case does. It gives me peace of mind knowing my family will have what we need. If the worst happens, I want you to be prepared for anything as well. Go to jacemedical.com, enter code Ben at checkout for 10 bucks off your order. That's jacemedical.com, promo code Ben. This book is incredibly narcissistic. Now, it's tragic because obviously this is a person. He is about my age. I think we were born the same year. He's 38. I'm also 38. And, uh, and, Prince Harry obviously experienced tremendous tragedy when he was young. And because he blames that tragedy on the press and the British royal family simultaneously, really his, his own father, he sort of blames it on, because he, he blames the tragedy of Princess Di's death on these institutions. The institutions are bad, and he is a hero for breaking free from those institutions. And so what results is not a heroic portrait of a person doing a heroic thing. What results is a man in search of his authenticity. And so the book reads incredibly small. The, the, the book reads unbelievably narcissistic and, and self-serving, which is why it, it also has some very bizarre moments. And one, one of the, so the, the clip that I actually want to play here is going to be clip 30. Okay, so this is Harry explaining why it is that Harry sees himself as inferior. What is important about Harry? Right, he's insulted by the fact that he has a role in the family and that that role isn't the primary role in the family. So here he is explaining in his own words why exactly he's so upset. Willie was the heir, whereas I was the spare. This was shorthand often used by Pa and Mummy and Grandpa and even Granny. The heir and the spare, there was no judgment about it, but also no ambiguity. I was the shadow, the support, the plan B. I was brought into the world in case something happened to Willie. I was summoned to provide backup, distraction, diversion, and, if necessary, a spare pot. Kidney, perhaps. Blood transfusion. Speck of bone marrow. Right, this is how he sees himself. Right, the role that he has been given, which is to be essentially backup for his brother, who is going to be the king, or to be a member of the broader royal family. That's not enough for him. Right? What he needs is to feel free. What he needs is to find himself, to search for his authenticity. He has to break out of being the spare. Now, does it seem kind of brutal that people are calling him the spare in front of him? He admits, by the way, that that is a joke, that, that people were saying that sort of joke in front of him. And yeah, that's cruel and it's not a nice thing to say. Also, he's an adult. And the reality is that in any system, you have a role. At your job, are you the boss? Sometimes you're the boss, but very often you're not the boss. 
Does this mean that you are not a relevant piece of the system? Does it mean you're not important? Are you always the primary? In other words, so what this as listen, I mean, you listen to what Queen Elizabeth says right upon her 21st birthday, that she is dedicating herself to the realm. And then you hear Harry complain about a role that does not actually require all that much of him. He's given tremendous freedom within that role to go and do whatever humanitarian work he wants to do, as he makes clear in the book. He has a pretty solid budget. This is a person who is not poor. And, and yet it's not enough because, again, what this comes down to is personal peak at his own life and the status of his own life. And he's going to dump on his family and the institutions that make him an important person in the first place. And in doing so, he's going to make himself more important, which, by the way, is why, as others have observed, there will be no second act for Prince Harry. Once you already dump the dirt on your family, there's nothing more you have to offer to the public. Once you've ripped on the institution, you're no longer of relevance. You have, you've actually destroyed the thing that you were standing on. Okay, so to understand what exactly Harry is doing in this book, you have to understand that He's ripping down these institutions and he's tearing away at his own family and at the crown and he's doing all of this stuff specifically because he feels personally hurt. And the theme running throughout the book, and of course, he's an unreliable narrator because everybody's an unreliable narrator. He's a a particularly unreliable narrator because he has a a ghostwriter. And the ghost in this book, the ghostwriter in this book, is the same guy apparently who wrote Andre Agassi's Open and wrote Phil Knight's Shoe Dog. So he's a very good writer, the ghostwriter. The ghostwriter, I, I won't say captures Harry particularly well in many places. So my favorite personal example of this is that Harry is consistently saying throughout the book, I never read books. I don't know. I don't read. I'm not a good student. I don't like poetry. And yet the, the ghostwriter can't seem to stop himself because he feels like I'm writing for a prince. So I have to, I have to make literary illusions. So he will make literary illusions and buy them back. <laughs> it's really funny. So he'll say, so, so Harry literally says about his own father, what troubled him most was how I went out of my way to avoid books. And then randomly, you'll have clip, you'll, you'll have section, sections of the book where he says stuff like, ours is not to reason why, as Flea's great granddad said, or Tennyson, whoever. Right? The, the, the ghostwriter will insert a literary illusion and then have to buy it back because you recognize that Harry would never make that literary illusion. He does this over and over. He invokes Wordsworth. And then he's like, that old guy. He says, Wordsworth, for one. I'd managed to avoid reading that old gent's stuff in school. But now I thought he must be pretty damn good if he spent time around these parts. He hadn't thought about Wordsworth. That's not a thing. Okay, but. Put aside the gap between the ghostwriter and the and the actual narrator of the book, Prince Harry. And you get to the underlying seething discontent that Harry has at his own role and at the royal family itself. And his baseline justification for his seething discontent is the death of his mother, Princess Diana, in 1997 in a car crash in which the driver had a blood alcohol level that was like three times the legal limit and spun out of control and, and ended up killing Princess Di and others in the car. So Prince Harry blames this on pretty much everybody. He, he blames this on the press. He blames this on his family, in some ways, kind of his, his father and Camilla. But most of all, what he basically says is this is the original sin. Now, the problem is that if you say that the original sin of the, of the royal family is Princess Di's death, this leads to a pretty stark contrast because there's another brother, right? And that older brother, William, is going to be the king. And William does not blame the institution for his mother's death. William is not a person who's trying to undermine the institution. He's going to be the king. And so what that means is that Harry has to somehow draw some sort of excuse as to why he is not taking the role that he is given in stride the same way that William is. And that is one of the themes running throughout the book. So as we say, this whole thing begins with Princess Di, and it gets very weird because the the ghostwriter is a fan of Jung and Freud. He starts inserting very odd allusions throughout the book that are somewhat creepy. He, Harry sort of makes himself out to be the, the only legitimate heir of Diana in the book. He says stuff like this. I'd inherited this from her, I thought, along with her nose, her blue eyes, her love of people, her hatred of smugness and fakery and all things posh. Right? That's what he inherited from Diana. He's the true sort of Diana in the family. And as it'll turn out later, Meghan Markle is the real Diana figure in the family. And, uh, and it, it, listen, the beginning of the book, the first 120 pages is really, really sad because it's about a kid losing his mom. And, and telling himself the lie that his, his mom isn't actually dead. She just ran away. And it's very sad and very upsetting, obviously. It also leads to some obviously deep-seated psychological issues for Harry. I mean, here is a clip. This is the most probably well-publicized clip of the book so far uh, of Prince Harry talking about a point in his life where he went to the North Pole and proceeded to get frostbite on his penis 
And that led him to try to take measures to alleviate the symptoms of this frostbite and, le and leads to this extraordinarily weird clip. My penis was oscillating between extremely sensitive and borderline traumatized. The last place oh, I no. wanted to be was Frost Nippistan. I've been trying some home remedies, including one recommended by a friend. She'd urged me to apply Elizabeth Arden cream. My mum used that on her lips. You want me to put that on my todger? It works, Harry. Trust me. I found a tube, and the minute I opened it, the smell transported me through time. I felt as if my mother was right there in the room. Then I took a smidge and applied it down there. Yeah. Alrighty, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We will be getting into just how Pete Buttigieg screwed up the FAA. And yeah, he, he kind of did. Plus, we'll be getting into House Republicans trying to protect the unborn after they are actually born in botched abortions and Democrats screaming and shouting about it. If you're not a member, become a member. Use code Shapiro at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Click that link in the description and join us. 